Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today we're going to finish up on that belt grinder come uh, heck or high water. <laughs> and while I'm at it I want to point out that right there that's Chuck Bomarito's sticker. Right, that one right there. And Chuck is a certified nice guy. Alright so y'all go over to Outside Screwball and take a look at his channel. Back to it here. Uh, like I say, we're going to finish up the belt grinder no matter what. And then we're going to get ready for future projects. Now I've got a couple of views that will come up next. These aren't, uh, these aren't sights or scopes. These are something all, altogether different. And in fact, radically different for me. And I'm not going to tell you what they are until I get to them. But they, they'll come after, after this video. And then we're going to get into a couple of little smaller, faster projects that... Uh, I've, I've been wanting to do for a long time. So while you guys are getting a cup of coffee or a jug of corn liquor or something, get, get, it, get it all set up here and sit down and, and let's get to work on this belt grinder. All right? I finally learned how to keep the blade from jumping off. I, I took the thing apart, took the wheel off the top, examined it exactly how it was made, and once I understood it, I put it back on there and I don't think I'll ever have the blade jump off again. It was just me not knowing how to do it. You know? Same thing with my new angle grinder. I would stop it and the brush or whatever was on the end of it would, would keep on going from momentum and unscrew itself. And I figured out that I just need to get a big wrench and whack it a couple times. And, you know, whatever tools on it won't come off. So, Everything's from getting used to what you got and learning about it, I guess. We are started on the band song. We're going to finish up on it, too. All right, here's a miscalculation. I, uh, I made the legs on this thing a little over an inch tall. And that was a mistake. They should have been maybe four inches tall. Because I had to come back in and cut the tip of one of those legs off with my Dremel tool so that this belt would have have room to run there uh, just one of those things that happens when you're when you're not really thinking I guess alright so now then I've got to go ahead and solve the problem here of that idler wheel tensioner tensioner wheel get it tightened down I've got to get the tracking nice and straight on the on the motor I already got the belts for it, and I've got, of course, got one installed there to measure things. I'm going to change from a torsion spring to a tension spring. You can't get a good strong torsion spring without making it yourself, and I don't want to damage my lathe. I worry about that more than actually being successful with the spring. Okay, so I added a tension spring to it there. Uh, what do they call it? An extension spring, as opposed to a, a as opposed to a compression spring, and it looks like it's going to hold it pretty good, and that's probably going to be where the tracking is going to going to work there too. Although I've still got even more little adjustments, I'll take you around the other side and show you. As you can probably see here, this belt is. Just a little bit crooked to my platen, which I slotted back there so I could move it around, which means I'm going to have to sort of move it this way a little bit. But I'm just turning this by hand, but it looks to me like we're tracking pretty good right there. So what I'll need to do is to straighten the platen up so it's happy with everything and go ahead and finish the tool rest. I got started on it here. I just hadn't finished it. I had several other things that I had to do first, and so I did them. Now we're ready to get back to the, the tool rest. At least I call it a tool rest. I don't know what, what it really is. Hopefully that'll hold everything straight while I tack it down and get it sort of started on being welded up. And then there will be the upright piece for the, you know, for the tool holder and then I'll have to make the, the table part of it and make it fit on there. So today 
I think that the tool holder will be finished and a little squaring up things will be done, painting and hooking a, a uh, plug-in receptacle on the motor. It's just got a wire that comes out and cut off on the end there right now. I've got easier to crank it up, so there it goes. The belt's cracking. And uh, I didn't turn it on for y'all to see because I don't have an on-off switch. All I've got to plug in. I'm going to have to get an on-off switch for it. Then everything will be really lovely. There it goes. It's spinning away there. And it's even running in the right direction. It's noisier than I expected. I don't know. Maybe some of the bearings aren't perfect. Uh, they were cheap bearings, but... If the bearings turn out to be bad, I'll, I'll get some more. After all, I've had to do almost everything else over twice. I want to put the table on top of this, uh, this piece right here. I want a little bracket to come down on each side so that I can tilt it back and forth. So I need enough clearance for this guy to go in here and maybe just a little extra. That's a little bit extra that right there. But maybe I'll just uh, add another 40 thousandths or so. Just to make sure that it's enough. I ground off the corners this time instead of machining it. I'd probably have been faster to go get all this stuff and set up and machine it, but I didn't. So anyway... I think another 50 thousandths off of that and I'll be all right. I stuffed a paper towel in a seam up there that belt cover makes it a lot quieter. I disabled the power feed down because it's, it's, it's great for you know boring and drilling but it was a little bit slow for this right here so I just disabled it so I could go a little faster by hand I guess I'm gonna have to go back into software and add a really fast setting but that's for later all right I'm gonna take these two pieces drill a hole through them thread one side uh, 5 16 18 and then I'll take what I'm going to use for a little table here and weld these onto the bottom of it and then drill a hole in the, the piece I've got to go up and down in there and clamp this onto both sides of it so you'll see what I mean here in a minute when I get it set up for welding alright so I've squared it off with a square clamped it down I ground these to an undercut on both sides here so now I'll just weld the little bugger down and then we'll clean things up and paint it and I think probably we'll be maybe officially through we'll see I think we got it welded on there fairly good and so I'll just let it cool off and when it's cool I'll take this big piece out and do the machining on it so that it can lean back without hitting anything and we'll see how good that works out and then of course we'll be ready to fit it over here and look at it and then go paint it to help in <coughs> tensioning things I started out with this spring here seven inches long and I shoved it in this pipe here and I couldn't uh, I couldn't push the thing all the way in it was too strong for me so I cut off a third of it and put in there now I can I can push that third as you can see I can I can move that and I may I may at one point take this and pull the third out and put this two-thirds part in 
which will make it even that much stronger. We'll see. Depends on where the belt sticks. I can add another spring back here behind this tensioner wheel. Or maybe even two more springs or get a stronger spring. And there's a lot of things I can do to tighten it up if the belt slips. That's something we don't know yet. But we haven't had it uh, <laughs> haven't had it running to find out. I feel like that's probably that's probably not enough tension there. That's what I feel like. Anyway, when this stuff cools down, we'll get on to trying it out. We'll try it out before I paint it. All right, that's what the finished product will look like, except for uh, you know being painted. It'll be painted when they get through. Uh, I've still got to machine off that little bit under there and I've got to install an on off switch for this thing that's something else so I'm still a couple of hours I guess at least away from being really officially finished but I've got to get busy and run the wire for the uh, for the stupid thing for the switch all right, so now we've got an on-off switch. We've got a little rest here that can be, you know, angled. I better tighten it down when I'm thinking about it, though. I did one thing <laughs> backwards I put the threaded piece on this side instead of this side as I had intended so probably I'll have to get a larger diameter bolt and reverse the threads on that there's always a mistake it seems like uh, but it's on there all right so let's let's see if it runs in the small wheels are a little noisy. I'm beginning to think maybe maybe I put some bad bearings in there. But we'll correct that later. This thing will have to have a, a million little touches later. But uh, let me go find something to grind. Here's a piece with some welding thread on it. Let me get some uh, first of all uh, first of all grind. A little piece of the welding stuff that was on there. You made it pretty quick. This thing's gonna, it's gonna eat metal like butter. See how it's shiny in the end on it? Let's paint this one out.
it gets really hot quick. So I guess there's the obligatory turn off the lights and and make it show sparks part. So let me move you over a little bit this way. And I'll turn out most of the lights. That's enough sparks. That metal's too hot to hold on to already. All right, let me turn the lights back on. And we'll we'll do a conclusion here, a little summary. All right, I'm I'm glad I made it, and I'm glad that it's finished. And I think it's going to be a really nice tool. That thing eats metal like crazy. Uh, I think the the light show there wasn't as spectacular as it could have been, but. Once I can do a couple of little tiny finishing touches here and there, like the uh, little rest here for grinding things, uh, I, I put the threaded side on the wrong side, so I'll have to go and re-drill that and re-thread it. But that's not a big deal. It leans over, you know, like it's supposed to. Let's do that. Somebody's going to want to see that. stuff in the floor but go ahead leaning it over I think the leaning over was probably one of the major points of the thing I guess let's go around the front and take a look all right it's rolled over and we'll turn it on and maybe my might have cooled off Grind, grind things like that if you want to. Not sure why you want to, but there you are. Works upright, works sideways. So I tell you, project a success. Okay, some things I would do different. These legs under here, I made them about an inch tall. I should have made them three inches tall because I had to come back and cut the tip off of that leg so that uh, the belt could come past it there. I didn't realize how tight the alignment was. So if you make one of these, be sure to get at least three inches of, of height there, if not four. Uh, the other thing is I, I used a slightly different motor than he did. I, the pad, bolt pattern is just about the same, but it wasn't exactly the same. So I had to make these little adapters here to move the motor down a, a ways. Um, I don't know if you can even see what I'm pointing at. Yeah, anyway, I had to make these little adapters to move the motor. Other than that, everything seems to have gone pretty well, other than the fact that I changed the kind of spring that I got on the tensioner there. I couldn't make that stupid spring for nothing, nothing you know. So the spring that I put on it there is a tension spring and it does just as good as if it were the other way around and I see that I forgot to put the nut on this guy right here that would be a good thing for me to remember to do so would I do it again no probably not I don't think uh, it's exactly the the best thing to do looks like I forgot to put the nut on this thing here too he wants to back out so I got a few little spiffing up things doing and over the over the period of time in the future I'll find a lot of things that I need to improve or correct or modify I'm sure what did it cost me well the metal started off at two hundred dollars and I ran out of the inch and a half stuff and had to go back and buy more which probably added another twenty dollars to it and then all the odds and ends stuff I would say three hundred dollars maybe a little more 
I can't count the motor. It was given to me. It's a two-horse motor, so you can figure if you got to have a motor, you're going to have $150, $200 easy in a motor. Uh, and if you buy the wheels instead of making them, well, then there's, you know, they're about $30 to $50 a piece. You know, the big wheels probably, I'm guessing, nearly $50, $35 to $50. And the two little idler wheels, they may be 25 something like that. So, it's not cheap. Even building it yourself, it's not cheap. I think I came out fairly good on the belts. Uh, I got them on Amazon. They're generic belts, but they were uh, six of them for $18. So, I got two different grits. This is a relatively fine grit here. And then I got a much coarser grit for when you want to really destroy something. And there you are, from, from casting the wheels, which was a real fight, all the way up to machining the, the tiny little lighter wheels out of two inch bar, to all of it, it, was, it, was, it wasn't real, just real easy, so, but then it wasn't real hard, it was just time consuming. And I tried to make it simpler by cutting down on the welding and such. I would guess if you want to make something like this, the Mr. Peep model is probably the way you ought to go. I'm sure you can do it a whole lot cheaper. You don't need it to roll over like this one does. Myself, if I was going to design one and make it, I'd make a rectangle out of square tubing, mount the wheels on the corners of that rectangle, and hinge in the idler wheel, and it'd be quick and easy, you know. But there you are. So let's, uh, I guess it's time to go off and see if we got a Bubba joke or an Oli joke or something. Those are sure getting hard to come by. And then next week, maybe we'll do something new. I've got a project I saved for a long time. And I've got a couple of reviews to do too. So that's going to come up right off. The reviews will be next, I guess. But it seems like Bobby Sue was. Uh getting kind of concerned that uh, little Bubba didn't look like her and her husband Bubba and uh, so one day she decided she'd take her down to, to she's going to take him down to get one of those DNA tests you know so she did that and the results of the test come back said he wasn't related to either one of them you know so when Bubba come in from work that evening she says Bubba she says you know what little Bubba Jr. he he ain't related to either one of us. She, she says, somehow we got the wrong baby. And Bubba says, oh, he says, that ain't, I think, explain that. She says, well, just how would you explain that? He says, well, you, says, you, you remember when we were bringing the baby home from the hospital and he had a wet diaper? Yeah. He says, well, you told me to change the baby. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.